Hello, pupil gang. This is Dr. Seymour. Wow, it's been quite some time since I've been on here. Um, I've just been super busy um, with just work, launching my new business, shopiappeal.com, being a mom, doctor, all that good stuff that I've kind of neglected, you guys. I am sorry. Um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. For all my people gang who have been sticking beside me, I'm gonna stick beside them, who have been sticking beside me um, during this time, welcome back. So this video is gonna be on a topic that is much different from my other videos. Um, of course, on this channel, we discuss all things um, beauty, eye health, motherhood, and lifestyle. So this is pretty much my first uh, motherhood uh, intro video. So where I'll be talking about having what's called a high needs baby or toddler. You're like, what is that? Like, what's that? So stay tuned, stick through the whole video. I'm also gonna give you some tips and um, some things that have helped me deal with my son who is a high needs toddler. Um, and let's get into it. So if you stumbled onto this channel or even selected the topic of a high needs toddler, looking for some encouragement, a shoulder to cry on, just to vent, I've been there. I know what you're feeling and what you're going through. Just know that you're not alone. Um, a lot of times it's hard to explain to other parents or other moms what it's like to have a high knees toddler because maybe their child is not like your high knees toddler. So let's get into the definition of what a high knees toddler is or high knees baby because you know, <laughs> baby turned into toddler, we're still going. All right, okay, so let's get into it. So what is a high knees toddler? So I believe the first person to actually term this phrase is Dr. Sears. I actually um, did like a Google search or did like a quiz, like why is my child acting like this? But pretty much he was a um, parent to a high knees toddler. So some characteristics of a high knees toddler include, so one of the characteristics is that they're very intense, meaning that they tend to cry louder, play longer, laugh louder than other babies um, or toddlers. They can be very demanding. <laughs> um, demanding in a sense that uh, they always pretty much, they need constant attention. Whatever they want, they want it right now. There's no waiting um, or it'll be just a fiasco and they'll let you know. And that also leads to them being super draining um, just because for the simple fact, the intensity of high needs babies and toddlers, you have to stay two steps ahead of them um, just because of the uh, demanding attention uh, that they want, you know, as far as being high energy, it can really drain a parent. Another characteristic is that they don't sleep through the night. Um, they awaken frequently. Um, they're not self-soothers. Uh, so I could never put Cairo down and just like, you know how some people say, let it, let them cry, cry it out. Um, it got to the point he was making me cry because he, he <laughs> it's just like, when we tried to sleep train him, um, it was very difficult. So we tried the method of, you know, doing, increasing the amount of time that he laid in his crib or his bed. That just didn't work for us. Um, the first night that we tried it, I think it was like 45 minutes or 30 minutes or something like that before we went into the room. Um, he kept crying. Uh, we tried to increase it each night, you know, slowly tried to increase the amount of time uh, to, to the point they say to um, let him just cry it out. He cried the entire night. Um, and we tried this on several occasions and sleep training just never worked for us. Uh, when he was born, he would wake up like every 30 minutes, um, not to just feed, but just to be held. Like he, we couldn't put him down to sleep. He always needed some type of body warmth or, um, being next to someone, you know, in order to, to put him down to sleep. Um, we do co-sleep <laughs> just because it got to the point that I need to, 
I needed to sleep and I was becoming so sleep deprived that um, I just, you just co-sleep with him. I'll probably get into another video about that, but sleep training um, for high knees toddlers is, is very um, difficult. If you're able to do it, you know, kudos to you because we're still struggling in that aspect. Um, they, they awaken frequently. My son now is three years old. He was never a good sleeper. Um, till this day, he still wakes up like one to two one to two times a night it's gotten better but when he was a baby it was like every hour every 30 minutes of course he also still had GERD and I will also do another video about that as well um so it was very hard for us um as far as the sleeping aspect so he still is not a great sleeper um I had a conversation with another parent who has a high needs uh, child and she pretty much said that his sleeping or sorry, her daughter sleeping didn't get better until they were like seven years old. I'm just like seven. <laughs> so um, his sleep has gotten better, but he still wakes up um, throughout the night. And of course, he can't self-soothe. So we have to like either still pat him on his back or rub his back in order for him to still uh, to go back to sleep. They're never satisfied. Um, it's very hard to please a high needs toddler or a baby. Um, what works for one parent where they can just give them a bottle or a toy and they you know, can be left alone, um, that's not the case for a high needs toddler. They're just never satisfied with anything. So it's always um, a constant struggle of, of trying to figure out you know, why they're always whiny or um why they're never satisfied so some people are thinking oh well you, you're just spoiling your child no it's that's not the case uh, with high needs children they want one thing and then they, like this they quickly just change their mind and want something else another um characteristic of a high needs toddler or a high needs baby they are unpredictable okay one minute they can be the sweetest thing on the earth um you know just happy go lucky and then a second later which i'll insert a video so you can see what i'm talking about they just have a complete meltdown and their meltdown is not over until they feel like it's over and another um well going back to what i stated previously you can't put them down um especially when Cairo was a baby he always especially by me always wanted to be held anytime i try to put him down um or like even do like go to the bathroom it was a complete meltdown a screaming match you know for his mommy to come back so it was to the point where you know if i wanted to take a shower or use the bathroom i had to put him in his um little chair and sit him in the bathroom with me um, till this day, th still three years old, um, if I'm out of sight, it's a meltdown for him. Um, it's more so for me, well, I guess just in general because he does it to his dad as well. He always needs to be around someone. So separation anxiety um, is also another characteristic of a high needs toddler. It's very intense um, when they're separated or they feel like they're alone. Um, so we, we can as a baby it was hard to put him down he always wanted to be held or at least have some type of person or somebody in the room with him um so yeah so that's also draining as well you can't even get five minutes to yourself but um that's an, another characteristic so you're probably thinking oh well you're just saying stuff as you know that's just how toddlers and babies are no it's a much more intense um personality their personality is very strong um and it's just the way that they are so it's just a personality trait he doesn't have adhd he was never di diagnosed with that um he doesn't have autism he still developed and reached his milestones um, like any normal baby would it was just his personality his character his personality traits are just very intense so it made it very draining um, for us as parents we love our child but um, being that you know my personality my husband's personality were more chill 
and to have a child that's very intense can be very draining. Um, at first, I didn't understand it, which also led to my postpartum, which also led to my postpartum depression. Um, because when I had my son, I was out of state. I didn't have any family members. Um, so it was very um, draining for me. I still had, you know, family to come help me when they could. But for the most part, it was just me and him. So going through my own hormonal changes, dealing with the high knees toddler, um, fed also into my postpartum depression. So that's another video that I should make as well. If you want me to make another video um, about that, leave a comment below and um, I'll get into that more. So going back to tantrums, I understand every toddler goes through tantrums, um, but as far as comparing to other kids who have a normal uh, tantrum, his is just an all-out show um so there's no soothing him um as i mentioned before he's not a self-soother there's no calming down it's just one of those things that you know we can try to control it um but for the most part <laughs> it's exhausting is i'm not gonna say it's, it's it's not easy and it's it's very exhausting um it's kind of like when he has his tantrums you know, we try our best to, to calm him down or if it's something that, that, you know, we say no to, you know, you can't have right now, it's just an all out fiasco. Um, so he just has to, to, you know, write it out, I guess. Um, so that's very hard to explain, you know, to our parents, cause we get judgment all the time. Like, why can't you control your child? It's not that we can't control him. It's just his personality. Um, so telling him to calm down is just fuel to the fire. So you, so telling him to calm down only makes him uh, worse. Um, so a lot of it, of course, he's still developing, still trying to um, get out his emotions, but it's just on a just higher level. Um, so that's the easiest way that I can explain it. I'll probably insert some, <laughs> some clips here or something like that so you can see what I'm talking about. And just to go back to the beginning when he was a baby, um, of course I had I had he I had him um, by the way of having a cesarean, and so he had to go to the NICU just for some some problems um, as far as fluid bit being built up um, in his lungs. Oh, that's another story as well. I'm getting all these stories. Anyway, so um, I mean, hopefully this will help out another mom who's going who is going through this or, you know, just needs to hear from someone else. But um, he ended up going to the NICU. He, he's fine and everything now, but he ended up going to the NICU. And I remember the first time I went, you know, to see him after I was able to like get up and walk to the NICU to go visit him and see him uh, for the first time. Uh, the nurse was like, uh, he's going to be he's gonna be a tough one and I was like what do you mean a tough one um and she was like he's gonna be um to say it nicely he's gonna give you guys a hard time I was like what do you mean he's gonna give us a hard time that's my baby I don't know what you're talking about he's the sweetest thing the best thing on the earth which is very true but I just didn't understand at that time what she meant so he never liked to be swaddled Every time the nurses would try to swaddle, swaddle him, as far as, you know, when they wrap him in the, the, the blanket, um, he hated that. So he would do whatever to, he would scream on top of his lungs until his arms were free. So that is also another sign. They never like to be swaddled. Um, and then, of course, it got to the point where the nurses, he, he was never on the feeding schedule that they had for the other babies in the NICU. Um, he wanted to be fed when he wanted to be fed. So in addition to when I said that he, he didn't want to be put down, um, it got to the point where the nurses was charting and tending to other babies because they had to hold my son. That's how intense it was. So I was like, I don't believe you. No, my child is, no, that's, that doesn't apply to me. I was, she was right. So, um, just some survival tips 
for parents who do have a high needs toddler i did write some down so i can like remember um give yourself grace it's it's not easy it's hard to explain to other parents that your child is unique um and that every child is different every child is different so yeah may, some people friends family may pass judgment on you um but just allow yourself grace that you're doing the best that you can for you and your child i also had to learn to be patient um because dealing with a high needs baby or a toddler your patience can wear thin um being that your child is interesting or unique in some eyes um i had to learn patience and that just comes with time once you figure out how your child um, is your parenting style towards them it'll become a lot easier and um one thing that i did myself um which was kind of brought on by other people was comparing myself as a mother and my child to other people don't do that um it's easier said than done but it caused a lot of frustration like why is my child like this or you know you're getting judgment and criticism from other family members they mean well but they just don't understand uh, what it what it's like to have a high knees toddler like yeah you know like well my child doesn't act like this you know you can't control your child stuff like that little comments like that used to get to me it doesn't get to me anymore um all i do is like oh okay mm -hmm. but at the end of the day i know what i have to deal with uh, what's best for me and my child and as i mentioned before you are doing a great job just don't just try to stop the comparison game so um if you could, I didn't do this, um, but I probably should have, is find a support group. Find someone or like a group like in your area um, that, you know, mothers, parents, fathers uh, meet up who have high needs children because they are going to understand what you're going through rather than someone who doesn't have a high needs toddler. So finding a support group is, you know, key. They probably have some things on, um, you know, Facebook, Facebook groups, which I'm not on Facebook. I probably need to take my own advice. Um, and just finding a support system. And then uh, also in addition um, to finding that support Finding like a non-judgmental friend who won't judge you or, you know, just be a listening ear to you it was is always helpful. I have that friend, um, even though her child is not like mine, they're still more open to, to understand, you know, the highs and lows that I go through as a mother dealing with a high needs child. And a plus about it, though, um, that I've read, especially with children who are high needs toddlers, they end up being great leaders um, just because <laughs> just because of their intensity of their um, personality. They end up being uh, great leaders, great, you know, successful people um, once they become adults. So that's a plus to look at look at um even though my child is is small um that's another video as well uh my child is his height and weight is smaller than most kids um in his age group but that's due to GERD and things like that which I'll get into a, into another video um he doesn't let anybody boss him around so um you know and in comparison to other kids he doesn't care if you're um taller than him or if you're bigger than him, um, he tends to pretty much run the show. Um, so, you know, they said high needs kids end up being great leaders. So we're we're just open to see what that develops into, um, how he grows up to be. Um, they end up being very successful people from what I've read. So don't look at it as something negative. Um, just look at it as something that's just their personality and, you know, they're very headstrong, very intense, but that may work out for them in the long time, long term once they're adults. Um, they don't fall into peer pressure easily. Um, they tend to be, um, I would say, light, well, life, life of the party. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Um, so that's something to look forward to.
a quote that I heard from someone which actually res resonated with me was, um, if I can remember correctly, that um, instead of us focusing on the child being the best child for us, we need to be the best parent for them. Um, once you figure that equation out, it just becomes a lot easier. Um, especially dealing with the high needs toddler or baby. And it's no one's fault that your child is like this. Um, a lot of parents tend to put the blame on themselves um, when they have a high needs toddler. It's no one's fault. All you can do is do what's best for you and the child um, and go from there. So I hope this video was helpful and it helps another mom out. I'll probably do some more videos on how to deal with the high needs toddler. Just know that you're not alone. Um, don't compare yourself. Um, your child is unique. Everyone is unique. You know, it's just this, this is just the cards that we were dealt with and all we can do is just be thankful that our child is healthy, um, that they're developing, you know, the way that they need to, meeting their milestone and exceeding them. It's just that our child is unique or children is unique if you are dealing with the high needs toddler. Um, if you have any questions, any other things that you would like for me to talk about i did bring up some great points on other videos i should do as far as motherhood um that i'm open to share with you guys because i know when i was going through things and i was trying to look up uh videos on youtube it was very hard for me to find um other mothers or other parents that were open to sharing what they're going through um so yes i'm still sleep deprived my son is three but it will get better um, i'm hoping and that it will get get better so just giving e uh, each other grace that we're doing the best that we can and i will catch you guys in another one make sure to subscribe to my channel um you can follow me on instagram um dr seymour and that's dr dot s e e dot more i'm also on tiktok um at shop i appeal and then also if you are interested in this look in all of the products will be listed in the description box um and you can click click the link below as far as to get this look but that'll be for that'll be a, a video for another day as far as me getting into the details of it as always it's always nice talking to you guys and i will catch you guys in another video bye